All righty, welcome back to The Devil in Detail, the Grendel reread, rewatch, art podcast. We got something special for you today. What's up? I, introduce yourself. Hi. Oh, hi. hi. Oh, no, Ben. <laughs> hey, Eli, I, it's me. I guess, I'm Ben. That's right. I got ahead of myself. This is the 122nd episode of The Devil in Detail. Special, incredible episode featuring drumroll and entering... John K. Snyder. Hi, John. Thanks for being here. Hey. Hi. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me on board again. Good to see you. Absolutely. Good to have you here. And what we're doing today, what we're working on today is a commission that John is working on for none other than a, a truly stellar human being and just one of the top Grendel fans. Myself. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Humble, 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 humble. And uh, so let's get it going here. Check it out, everyone. It's an amazing Epi Thatcher. We've got some preview. We got some sketches, and we're just going to start at the beginning. So, John, tell us how you began this commission at this pen and ink stage. Okay, so uh, this is uh, my standard uh, process that I use when I'm doing these uh, uh, these uh, Grendel commissions, uh, when I do them uh, large size on the uh, Canson color paper. So uh, normally what I do is I work on uh, different different types of uh, colors, but I use, uh, this is a, a, just a swatch of uh, the uh, Prismacolor here, uh, paper that I use. It's a, uh, uh, not Prismacolor, rather Canson. And it has a, uh, has a uh, textured uh, edge to it, a uh, uh, layer to it. Uh, that's very advantageous in uh, adding in tones and, and colors and such. Um, I will work in a variety of colors. Uh, for this specific commission, I was going to go ahead and do it in black. Um, so uh, when working on black paper, um, I need to, what I normally do is, uh, rather than start the drawing freehand on the Canson paper, I will do a preliminary sketch on tissue paper. Uh, the reason for that is, is that if I'm roughing in a piece, if I'm roughing in with the Prismacolor on this paper here, and I want to make any kind of correction, uh, if you erase, it tends to uh, kind of uh, start to take off some of the color and some of the some of the texture. So rather than get into uh, uh, having to do a lot of uh, correction or erasing or anything else while I'm going along, I like to start out with the basic framework of the drawing uh, pretty much ready to go and down on, on the paper. So there's not a lot of, you know, like you don't have to switch something around like an arm or a leg or something like that. So um, it seems like a long process to do this, but it actually goes fairly quickly. And it actually can be more time saving than going back and trying to fix, so to speak, or correct a piece that's in progress on the paper. So what I'll do is, is I'll do a, a drawing on uh, transparent tissue paper, uh, like I have here. Uh, and I'll do a few doodles, you know, to get the idea of what I want to do. I try to make each Grendel piece uh, a little, just a little bit different. And, uh, you know, this one, I just uh, came up with a basic, uh, you know, Epi Grendel leaping through the air. And I had the idea to, to tear his mask in half so you get a little bit of his maniacal side. Yes. Uh, you know, the, uh, the the cross is a graphic element in the background and along with the, the blood flowing up. Uh, so it's, you know, I try to get a, a nice design effect in here and a nice contrast with the black, uh, which will later on be on the black paper. So I'll do the, the rough in pencil and then go over it in marker to kind of delineate it. It doesn't have to be a perfect drawing. It can be rough around the edges. Um, and so um, so once this is done, um, I will scan it on the computer. Uh, I'll scan it and uh, I might resize it a little bit so it fits within the 11 by 17 area. That's my working size uh, for the large pieces. Hmm. And, you know, I may reduce it just a hair so it doesn't bleed too far off the sides. And so what's really good about it, especially when working on the black paper, uh, is that, uh, is that uh, on the, so what I'll do is, is I, I will reduce it. So then, you know, I have the tissue, I'll be done with it at that stage. And then I will have um, the Xerox copy, which is the piece printed out. 
So once it's printed out like this, it's kind of handy to have uh, as a guide, actually, while I'm working on the finished piece. But then I will flip it, uh, you know, while I'm doing the print. So then I have a reverse of this. So uh, what I'll do then is I'll lay a sheet of tissue paper over it, and I will draw with the white Prismacolor. Uh, and I'll have it on the light table wow. so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, and, uh, and then I will I will do it in white pencil. I will draw the you know like a white pencil version of it. And so oh that's cool how it really picks up here. You can really see it, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so so then at that point you can lay it on a paper. You know, here's here's the here's the black paper here, and then you can lay it on here, and then and then I'll take just a standard number two pencil, and then just start rubbing. Uh, you know, again holding it very firmly, you know, oh. so it doesn't move, and then and then just rub over the top, and rub down to where you get the the white pencil. Now, if I was doing a Grendel piece on say a light blue, or or more of a you know something that's more you know readable, then I would be doing this stage, um, you know, with, with the number two pencil. And the number two pencil is actually better to use than a mechanical pencil because there's ex there's a lot of graphite in this. Uh -huh. So it will, it will transfer more than say a mechanical pencil. So just to give you a little example, here's like a, a little, that little square again. And I took and erased off some of the uh, pencil that I originally done here. Okay. So let me just move this off of here uh, for a sec. So let's see, we'll just put that down and we'll do this. And I'll put that up so you guys can see it. So, see. wow, it's amazing. That really shows up there. It's great. Yeah, it so, so then you'll see that again, holding this down kind of firmly, mm -hmm. then and pressing down. And you want to be careful if you want to try doing something like this. You want to be careful to kind of use the side of the pencil yeah. point because if you go down straight down, you can put uh, grooves into the uh, into the paper, and and that's actually not a bad thing. It can actually create a uh, kind of a neat texture, but you may not want that. So anyway, Man, and you want to do it so pretty. Cool. You want to do it pretty quickly because you don't want to spend you know too much time on. And I'm just going to do a little portion here. Sure. And and again, you kind of the pressure doesn't really go down here. You kind of put the pressure more up here uh, in this area, and that way, you do, again, you're not going to worry too much about grooving into <clears throat> the uh, the paper. It, it's just regular tissue paper, you said, John. Uh, is this is tracing? like I got a yeah. It's just regular tracing parchment paper. Uh -huh. And again, like again, that way, again, working sideways like that, you're not you're not ripping into yeah. I've I've never oh. seen this transfer method. I remember uh, there was a material that would transfer like this. It came in like it looked like uh, aluminum foil, the right. way it would come, and and that had graphite on the back of it or something like that. Right. Mm. Like so, so so you can see a little. Can you guys see that a little bit? Yeah, where, uh, white pencil is there. So cool. Yeah. So there's just a little bit there, and and uh, and then what I'll do is I'll take the the pencil, the white pencil, very lightly, and you know just start knocking out, and again uh, knocking out the uh, the the colors. You know, you can because again I just need kind of the path. To follow yeah to get started so i just wanted to show you a little bit of, of that process wow. and so what you end up with you know is so this is this is the piece um you know in progress here after i've after and if you look here you can see a little bit of the white pencil underneath yeah and then i've gone over the top and uh and uh basically, you know, outline everything that I had initially. And, you know, you, you know, sometimes I'll move a little, a few things. Uh, I've got Epi more facing the uh, viewer here rather than the three quarter view. It just, in my opinion, it just reads better, the, the split face. And uh, then it would like as the ink drawing, sometimes this will happen when you're transferring from doing line art on uh, paper to doing the, a color piece, 
is you'll make a few adjustments because you want to make sure that all the imagery is reading clearly. So, like I said, I've lightly put in all the tones here. So now we'll get started on uh, darkening up some of the some of the areas. Here. So uh, let's see here. Is this a common process as far as sketching not, or? I you know I think a lot of people just just will just work straight on the board. You know, they'll just go, I, I like, I like having a little more control over how it's going to turn out. So this is my way of, of making sure, again, I'm trying to preserve the, uh, I guess the integrity of the, of the cans on paper and, and make sure, you know, have it as clean around here as possible right. without a lot of erasing or anything like that. So, so, uh, I don't know if this is a common process that other people use when doing the cans on paper, but. I know like working on illustration board, um, you know, sometimes illustration board is very thick. Mm -hmm. So you yeah, can't like really that. work on a, re a, you know, you have to transfer it in one way or the other. Um, I know some people actually will print out, will laser, you know, use a laser printer and print out on a thin board, you know, like a, like a rough drawing and then draw over the top of that as well. But, you know, when you're doing something like that, the, uh, you, you don't have the option to erase, you know, because it's been printed. Right, uh, the, yeah. the actual image has been printed. So, so I'll go in here a little bit. Can you guys see this all right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I'll spotlight okay, it great. as well. So, so, uh, so I'm going to start um, darkening in his hand or lightning in his hand, I guess, is the best way to put it, uh, holding the staff here. So, you know, what I'll do is, is I'll outline the area here. As so, and on his straps, what I'll do is, is I'll use, and again, I use uh, Prismacolor pencils, um, and uh, I will go in, I'm using a light gray here to put in kind of a darker base for the straps. When did you move to this kind of style? Because when I see your commissions online, I mostly see you doing them like this versus just like you know, a brush on white paper or something? Uh, my my history of working like this uh, starts back to when I was working on the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde book back in 89. Uh, that was the Classics uh, Illustrated, right? Or Classics Illustrated. Sweet, um, yeah. You know, I was really, uh, that was when I was first trying to branch out into, uh, you know, working with... Uh, a really super graphic style mm -hmm. and I was doing a lot of angular like really hard angular geometric shapes and such uh and around that time and I I don't know exactly what I can't I can't pinpoint like the you know the aha moment of of using the colored paper but I had I was using like a lot of different textures uh on the Jekyll and Hyde book, a lot of ways of, of getting weird textures and different textures on the illustration board. Mm. And, and I think at some point I was, you know, using like, I was wrinkling up paper and like uh, uh, dyeing it in watercolor to get like different textures in the wrinkles. And, wow. and, for, and I think I was experimenting with colored paper and it wasn't cans on paper at the time, but it was some kind of art, black art paper. And with, and I was using the Prismacolor and um, I just really kind of took to it, you know, I just started, I started and I, the first few conventions I did when uh, the Jekyll and Hyde book came out at the beginning of 1990, that's when I, when I started doing sketches for, you know, related to the Jekyll and Hyde book, uh, I started getting into doing that. And, and I just, it, it just kind of, it just kind of went from there. And, uh, and that's, that's my beginning. That was the beginning of me doing the, uh, the colored pencil look. And I, and I really liked, you know, on the paper and I really liked it, you know, it, uh, I would call it the velvet Elvis effect because <laughs> it reminded me so much of, you know, of, of, of the black velvet paintings you would see like, you know, of, of Elvis and, and, and various figures, you know, and it's, I mean, there's no doubt about it. It creates an instant contrast, you know, yeah. and you mean, you, go ahead. I was going to say, you mean Pope Aaron the Innocent? Or is that what they call him? <laughs> In, uh, right. Randall? <laughs> well, well, here, and you know, here's the other thing too, you know, I mean, not only, not only had I just, 
finish the the Jekyll and Hyde book, but the uh, you know the Grendel, my run on Grendel there with uh, Jay and Bernie and Matt and uh, Joe Matt and everything that had just wrapped up. So, you know, people were requesting, you know, hey, can you do a Grendel sketch? Well, you know, on the black paper, I mean, it was great, you know, because you yeah, can do, the, you know, you can do the, the the eyes and the nose and it's like, there it is, you know, <laughs> it's and, all uh, there. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, that was a big part of the motivation, too, for sure, mm -hmm. you know, because I did, I was doing a, quite a few Grendel sketches during that period. Um, so it really took off from there. But, you know, uh, going back even further um when i was a kid in grade school the first time i had exposure to it was i had an art teacher um that had us do uh pastel drawings on on a uh, black construction paper hmm. and i remember having that that had a huge effect on me uh so you know i had that in my past as a point of reference to um to work on am i still in uh, okay, great. I just yeah, want to make sure. Yeah. So, so what I'm doing here is, is um, I'm just kind of following up on what I did initially with some of the, uh, uh, the <clears throat> cape here, the tattered cape is I'm going around and I'm, I'm illuminating, lighting up the edges of the, um, the straps on Epi. Um, and I'll just go around the piece in general and do this. Um, and what happens is with the, you know, as I'm working uh, in this fashion, uh, the piece starts to take on kind of a life of its own. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, I just kind of keep working at it, outlining and, and, and it starts and you start to get an idea, you know, where to pick your spots on the highlights, you know, but, mm -hmm. uh, but you want to get the initial, what I would call foundation down, mm -hmm. uh, which is what I'm doing here do you have like a light source in mind or is it kind of just coming from um, yeah i mean you know it's usually like in this piece it's kind of coming from up here down mm -hmm. um uh i would say that's the best you know that would be you know a, a primary source um you know with the epi stuff it's kind of got this uh kind of um i don't know how to put it uh quasi psychotic hallucinogenic <laughs> you know yeah, sure. so it's kind of got a random number of of any sort of light sources outlines etc you know kind of want to capture the kind of chaotic you know vibe of uh of the whole grendel scene at least uh specifically this particular run you know yeah. so John, go ahead oh sorry what, what i really liked about i don't want to backtrack but what i really like go right ahead the transfer step was mm -hmm. that there's a there's an element of like printmaking surprise you don't know what's going to be partially there what's going to only give you the pathway and the suggestion you know that you, you don't have to have the entire thing super tight so that like you said once it's transferred it can take on a life of its own and you can play jazz on the black paper you know it, it, despite how much control you've got uh, before you transfer yeah, I think then thanks. That's a really good, great way of putting it. I think, um, you know, sometimes I and, and, you know, honestly, when I'm doing these uh, initial pencil uh, and ink uh, tissue things, they this one, this one, I get kind of carried away on. <laughs> sometimes they're not necessarily that detailed. I just I went ahead and filled in the black and, you know, I was just kind of having fun with it. Uh, sometimes they'll be much more sparse than that. Because truthfully, um, yeah, a lot of nuance uh, doesn't really show. I mean, you can't get too much nuance into the the initial uh, drawing because, like you said, it's going to take on a life of its own. You really want to get down just the basic frame mm -hmm. uh, uh, because, yes, it, it will go in a different direction, and that's fine. You know, so so yeah, the control I would say is is limited. Um, uh, uh, you know, from the tissue to the, um, and it's one of those things where you do it enough and you get like a vibe, you know, of like, you know, wh where to go with it. Yeah. Um, also, I also, I should say, you know, also what's, what's really kind of helpful to point out, I think is, you know, when you're doing the rubbing stage, 
uh, just to show you an example, you know, what I, what I'll do is, you know, when I'm rubbing down, you know, I'll, I'll lift, I, I'll keep kind of one hand here yeah. and I'll lift up, you know, <laughs> see, because you don't want to, you don't want to spend all this time doing this and lift it up and like half of it is still not right. You have to like kind of chance, you know, trying to register it again. Um, it's good to mark little, you know, the corners here. I've got like a little, you know, registration there. there. Yeah. yeah. Just to kind of yeah. know where you lined it up. Cause again, it, even if it is a little off register, it's not a big deal, but yeah. yeah, it's normally probably a good idea, especially if you've got a very specific area like face or hands or mm -hmm. some kind of machinery to, to, to look up, you know, just double check to make sure that the whole thing is, you know, is, is there, uh, because that's a moment if you've transferred it all and then, you know, it's like, whoops, then you have to kind of backtrack. So, so I'm going to go in uh, here uh, and do a little bit on the hair. And again, like you said, I mean, you know, his hair is kind of nuts. So yeah. I just like to kind of, again, having that, having the, uh, uh, the base here, the foundation, I like it because then you can get loose, you know, and just yeah. do stuff like this. And, you know, the hair kind of just spin off a little bit like that. Um, and like would, I said, go ahead. Would you end up using different shades of white or something on, on one of these? Or is it kind of just always like, you know, stark white, stark blue? Just um, like... Well, for example. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. So, so you know, uh, so the white kind of, you know, for Epi's, for his hair, you know, I, I just stick with the white um, and I, and the different shades come in just having the light application here. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you get that uh, on the straps. I'll use like three different tones of uh, of gray and uh, it's it's really nuanced. But I also use that for, you know, the staff here. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, like the staff, I'll start to uh, delineate the uh, epi staff here. Same thing, you know, where I just kind of go in on, again, I've got this <laughs> underdrawing here, so I can start going in with this tone of gray. It's and amazing what these little strokes do. Like you said, it, 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 it's, it, it, it's magic, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's but, like magic. Well, it's but, always like magic, John. When we look at the work, we <laughs> spend all the time wondering how he does it. Yeah. And, uh, it, it, you know, it's uh, it's wonderful to sort of see uh, under the hood a little bit. Yeah, um, it really helps a lot to have uh, the pencils. Uh, I, I keep them sharpened. Yeah. You know, it's like a really fine point at, when you're doing the outlining part. I try to keep it. Um, uh, the, the point's pretty fine. So, you know, I'll try to sharpen everything ahead of time. And um, also, I'm very, I'm very. Uh, if this helps in, uh, with uh, people, if they want to try this, is uh, when I'm applying the pencil here, uh, the pressure is super light. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really like it's almost like yeah. I'm just feathering uh, the top of the the top of the paper. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons for that, uh, which is. Um, first off, as you can see, it, it immediately delineates you know, the, uh, it, it goes down. Uh, it also offers you the option that if you need to do make, you know, a slight correction and I'll use the, the edge, the, the, you know, a regular number two pencil eraser. I don't know why this is for some reason, if I am lightly erasing a line using this, as opposed to a uh, uh, Mars Stadler <laughs> eraser, for some reason, this has a tendency to leave less of a mark hmm. than this does. Um, and for actually, since we're getting into process and, and tools, uh, when I'm sharpening my pencil, I uh, I don't know if we could get this in the, in the main image or not, but uh, but I always use this uh, uh, vintage uh, Panasonic plug-in uh, electric eraser. Wow. Uh, I've I've used this. I've got this. The, the people are selling or sell these off of eBay. You can get a a decent working one for around. Can you show that in the main, in the, in the main one again? I just spotlighted it. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. I got my, oh, I got my John. oh yeah. you got, John's got one too. 
Yeah, uh, mine, mine's uh like maybe ten years old, but I've still had this one for. I've had this one only for twenty years. <laughs> yeah. Now that one, I I've I've got one of those too. Uh, yeah. And that was really handy for a long time, but then I got I got one of these uh, older like office type yeah. ones, and it's just it it's a it's really heavy duty, and um, and I've had good luck with it. I mean, you know, uh, people advertise these, and I don't know, maybe you know, maybe it won't work for long, but. That that's worked really well. It's not battery operated. It's uh, electric, uh, plug in rather, and um, and it just does the job. I mean, it really, it's it's super helpful. Um, and uh, and I use a standard old, you know, hardware store paintbrush. I got a few flakes on there, so from showing the. So I'll just lightly, oh, wow. do that just to keep from you know if I brush my hand, it could actually you know create streaks from the. Uh, yeah. The pieces of prisma color mm -hmm. so let's see and, and also it's you were ask, asking about the uh the tones same with the uh the cape I oh, wow. different shades of blue too mm -hmm. um and so at the end at the end after i get it the other part about having it light here once you get all this stuff kind of lightly blocked in then then at the end you can go in and uh like here's this tip here and I'll show you, you know, I can go in a little darker. I'm pressing down a little bit here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, starting yeah. to delineate uh -oh. the, yeah, the curls there. And again, you want to kind of take advantage of the tones that are already created on the uh, paper. So this is like a little thing in between here, but you can see where there's a little bit of, you can just do just a hint mm -hmm. of shading there and just leave it. And then it kind of fades out a little. Uh, same here. Here, I'll just go ahead and work on this part of this is the top part of Epi's uh, hood here. So yeah, when, when we look at these mixed media pieces by you and by Matt, we're always trying to like reverse engineer how the natural tone of the paper is. It's these it's used just like this. Yeah, and again, it's really got a lot to do with. Uh, and again, I think it comes from just doing it for so long. It's an acquired mm -hmm. thing, and I think that uh, you know it's. You just kind of go light and you just kind of compress down just a hair, but you know, like leave a little dark here. Yeah. You know, and just kind of keep working down. Are we getting all that? Okay, great. It seems like there's a lot of like painting ideas that you've pulled into illustration. Uh, what do you think? Is that. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, well, you know, no, it's 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 interesting that you say that because you know I never, uh, you know, I always kind of had trouble with actual, you know, uh, painting, you know, just like straight out of the tube mm -hmm. painting, and um, mixed media illustration has always worked for me because it's been a form of, it's it's funny, it's kind of almost like I'm creating a sense, a painterly sense, yeah. Um, but it's allowing me uh, a certain level of control uh, in the process uh, that I don't feel that I have with the painting. I mean, I love, you know, when I look at, you know, the, the classic illustrators and painters and, you know, I, I look at the, how they just lay down a color and it just dries in certain shades and it just has this kind of uh, immediacy to it that I think is really awesome. I'm in complete awe of that sort of thing uh who were some I, of those guys that you were looking to uh you mean as far as what i'm describing there yeah exactly some of the artists. Uh, well you know i mean i love how uh uh some of the old uh pulp paperback artists um oh gosh uh uh i'm drawing a, i'm drawing a blank here for a second uh yeah, i don't uh, know many of those names uh oh gosh uh maybe uh, i can look it up something he did michael michael hooks is okay. the with the main guy that I know is that's who I was thinking of. Okay, he's the main guy that has this amazing uh, ability to combine uh, kind of a loose wash style with a hard edged, um, hard edged graphic style. And I, you know, again, I, you know, I aspire to 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 get into doing some more things like that in the future. You know, I've always been a huge fan of Sinkevich's work. I love how he uh, does that sort of thing. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know uh that you know he's he's really uh really great at that sort of stuff 
Um, I think uh, I've always admired how uh, Chaikin uh, in his color work well, way back in the 80s. I loved how he uh, going even uh, when he was doing, I think, some of the earliest graphic novels like Stars My Destination and Empire, his way of combining mixed media and graphics, uh, I thought was really fantastic. Um, what was the one he did with Michael Moorcock? Uh, flowers what? of hell i think is what it was called Heavens flowers of, of heaven, yeah, heaven something of heaven of hell something like that yeah, but, yeah okay but that was that was beautifully done uh yeah for sure um so anyway like i said you know i just kind of going through here yeah and again it just kind of of heaven the flowers of hell thank you thank you I just looked it up when yeah. when when you had the chance, I'm sure, to see those guys maybe work or sketch at a, at a con floor or, or wherever. Are you, like, decoding? Well, I've, I... Uh, I've, seen, uh, I've seen some Kevin Straw a little bit, and it was, like, it was da it was as dazzling as this. I, I couldn't believe <laughs> it. You know, uh, it's like... <laughs> I mean, I can look all day long, but I still can't figure it out myself. <laughs> I mean, I'm always, uh, I'm always blown away at it. You know, when I was... Uh, uh, when I was in my early, uh, mid, late teens, um, I lived in the D.C. area, and I was very fortunate that, uh, you know, I could just ride the metro down to uh, the National Mall and uh, go to the National Gallery, East and West Wing, uh, Hirshhorn, yeah. Yeah. and, you know, see uh, a lot of great uh, paintings. And I would, I would go right up almost nose to canvas as close as they'd let me. And I would just, I would just stare, you know, at these, you know, Van Gogh and, and, uh, and there was a Francis Bacon, that is, all the, you know, all these different styles, uh, you know, there, there was a Rockwell show I went to a few years ago, uh, you know, that uh, was really fantastic. Uh, uh, there was, uh, they would have permanent, they had a permanent exhibit of New York Ashcan artists, which were like 1920s artists that worked in. You know, again, this kind of rough painterly style, but semi-illustration. Hmm. And I, again, I would stare at this stuff. And I, a lot of times I was like, well, the longer I look at it, maybe it will seep into my subconscious, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I would kind of hope that I would just kind of get the ideas, you know, for, for application. But um, no matter how much I will see someone doing an example of how I, you know, this is one of the things I do love about looking at people doing art online is, um, uh, when they'll show their process um but i'm more i'm more a spectator in that i don't know if i really pick up in this i don't see something where oh i can try that because uh their application seems so particular to their own style that it's like you said it's like i'm looking at somebody else's magic uh as opposed to something that i can i think you could look at somebody's uh way of working and maybe maybe it will inspire you to do something uh but it wouldn't be exactly how that person did it. yeah i think what's intimidating is when you try to do something exactly how it seems like the person is working and you can't get the same effect i think if you had kind of a, a loose attitude about uh how to uh you know hey this looks like a good idea and then just kind of figure out what works for you Mm -hmm. uh it, you know it's kind of a trial and error thing and i think that's that's the way it's been for me you know but um so it, back in the grendel era it seems like you know both you and matt kind of do this amazing style on these colored paper is it something that you guys kind of came to together or is it something that maybe you kind of drove each other to i don't know well uh, you know it's funny i don't know i don't know who started i I, you know, it's funny because, you know, Matt and I would do, uh, we, we would do some shows together mm -hmm. and, uh, we did some shows together right around that period. And, uh, we started about the same time, you know, and, just a uh, great minds think alike type of situation. Well, you know, I, you know, I think it was like, we were kind of both kind of side by side and it was like, Hey, that looks pretty cool. And <laughs> Hey, let's try that. And, and, you know, Matt really got into it, too. And he does. Yeah. But, you know, it's really cool to check out what he does. Now, um, so this is kind of the general Cape area back here. And I'm not yeah. going to, I'm not going to. So what I'm going to do here is 
try to indicate a little bit. So I'll just take the side of the pencil here. And again, you know, try to really take advantage of the, um, of the uh, texture and just kind of lightly work it in and just yeah, go- just tickling the, the paper. Yeah, and just go over the top to tie in, you know, this part of the cape here, this part of the cape here. And his, his uh, hood here, and just kind of, and again, it's like, yeah, I just kind of follow in what feels right in terms of, you know, kind of a abstract path of where the color should go. Absolutely. And uh, it and does. Again, I, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I, I'm backtracking a little again. It does feel a little bit like uh, you and Jay and Matt and Bernie and Joe, and, you know, that there's like a, aesthetic dna and there there Thanks. are times there are times well yeah you all you all fit together really well for sure absolutely but there, it feels like there are times when these uh mixed media dry pieces will show up in our feeds and for a, a, a moment or maybe longer we we won't know if it's yours or matt if if it if it, without being you know prompted. no no i can totally get that you know um I totally get that. I mean, it's like we're 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 working and traveling in similar, uh, like you said, with the DNA and similar paths and in yeah. a similar time period. You know, and it's probably funny, inspirations but, too, like you said. Yeah. Oh powers. yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I think uh, uh, you know we were all inspired by. Uh, I mean, it, you know, the everyone was looking at stuff like uh, Lidecker you know, which was very graphic. His work was very graphic with the hard edges, with the outlines. Uh, you know, Bob Peak, the, uh, was a great movie poster artist from that period uh, that also had a very graphic style, also very graphic with, the, you know, lines. He did the Star Trek, the motion picture, you know, uh, movie poster, you know, that has the bands of color, you know, color shooting off everywhere, you know, which, that one. again, Sienkiewicz, uh, you know, use used quite a bit too um but there was bernie fuchs who was a, a illustrator from that period as well um but yeah no there was there it's it's funny i just saw a, a post i think on twitter by brendan mccarthy uh who was part of the british uh that great group of british artists that had worked on a there was a book from eclipse called strange days uh, yep. which was a collection of uh, some of these great uh, British artists. And he was just talking about the late 80s, to early 90s period, and what what an amazing period that was for color work. And it was like there was this this kind of school of, of you know, of like-minded approaches to the work. You know, you've got, you know, you had Sienkiewicz, Bisley, uh, McCarthy, uh, just a whole a whole group of people that were working in this kind of uh you know it was, it was almost like a if there was like a music movement you know the there's a certain kind of style that everybody's got something different going on but there's like this connecting tissue uh going on all between it and um and yeah i think we all i think we all came from we all came from that um you know and and i think when you know people really uh, have something going, you know, they're really inspired, uh, and you get a group of people that are kind of like-minded. I think that energy kind of blends into each other, you know, yeah. and, uh, and it's, you know, it's a, it's a neat thing because everybody's still got their own thing. You know what I mean? There's some, 100%. there's some similarities, but then there's not, you know, but, but it's like once, and, and especially if you're in a group of creators, once someone gets like super, jazzed about some sort of style or a trick you know it's kind of contagious and everyone's like oh my god what did he just do there how did he do that i'm gonna try to take it and tweak it my way or i'm gonna try to use that somehow that he won't even know that i'm using it because you know so especially when you get in a group and then that made me also think like during the what became the god and the devil period were you guys doing shows together and, and I know you weren't really like creating in a bullpen, but what, what 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 were the times when you actually met up? I guess when we were talking, you guys were saying it wasn't it was like few and far between. 
You know, it's such a different, it's such a different yeah. era because, um, you know, we, uh, you know, we, we had so, such limited contact compared, yeah. you know, compared to what you can do nowadays. Right. So, yeah. you know, it was kind of like, um, everyone was kind of off in their own, their own corner doing their own thing, you know? Yeah. Um, so, and, you know, it's really great about, uh, you know, I was watching the, uh, you know, your, the analysis of the books, the God and the devil books that you guys were doing. And it was really kind of a, a, a bit of a revelation for me because, you know, I'd seen the comics before, but seeing the detailed page by page analysis you guys were doing, it was, it was a unique experience for me because, you know, it was allowing me to focus. I mean, I, I was in the headspace of, I've got to pencil all these pages by, you know, X time period, you know, and you know then the next issue and then the next issue and then you know i was inking uh, a few a few of the issues there uh but mostly penciling so you know i was really you know really heavy into that and i wouldn't you know it was like well the print i'll see the printed book when i see the printed book and you know bernie would do the inks and then joe matt would do the colors and uh you know i didn't see the final result till somewhere down the line i was already you know into the second or third issue past whatever was already on the stands or, or even further so there was kind of a disconnect there wasn't really a kind of you know back and forth fine-tuning minutia it was just you know it was just kind of move 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 so much uh, work yeah uh, yeah but you know i think there was a collective force and i think what i didn't really what I really didn't realize was at the time was I was kind of off in my own little uh, studio, you know, where I was working and Jay was off where he was working, but, you know, uh, Joe, Matt and Matt Wagner and uh, Bernie Moreau were all in one studio. Right. So, and I think looking back on that now, that was really uh, a gift because I think that really helped to keep things moving to have them all in one place, you know, so that was kind of like the that was kind of the end of the chain of production for each issue was the was the inking and coloring stage. So I think it was really great that, that both of those guys were in the same place. Yeah. You know, oh, to be a stage. fly on the wall in that apartment. You yeah. know, the thing is, is I wish I was on a fly yeah. on the wall because yeah. you know, I thought the same thing. Because I'd be super you know high what? and you'd be. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't really. You know, it didn't really. You know, again, it was it was like we really weren't comparing notes. We were just yeah. working on getting the book out, you know. Yeah. And uh, and so I didn't meet Bernie until uh, there was a a Grindel con. Uh, Rance, oh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Hosley, I think had put together. I think that's it. Yeah, we still got to yeah, do Rance. that, man. I want to talk to him. I know uh, Rance. This. Oh, you should definitely talk. You know about Rance. it, Ben. We talked about it. There's a poster and stuff. Remember? Yeah, yeah. So Rance put call? together this show in uh, Moscow, Idaho, and uh, it was, uh, I think, the beginning of 1990. And um, he got uh, uh, Matt, myself, uh, I believe James Robinson. I think James was there. I'm, I can't quite recall. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim Sale, um, uh, and Bernie. Uh, and it was the first time I met, I did. So that was the first time I met Bernie after finishing the work on the book, you know, and, uh, and I really hit it off. I really, uh, really enjoyed, uh, meeting with Bernie and talking with Bernie, but that was the first time we'd actually, you know, communicated, you know? So, um, uh, so, you know, this, this, this whole experience of us working together was kind of a silent partnership, you know, it was just kind of like we were joined you know, through the work, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, um, so uh, that was the, like, so you can see now I'm just darkening in the. John, I'll tell, oh, I'll, wow. I'll tell you one now, which is that I met you for the first time. Hey. And Eli too, as uh, John J. Strider, the 10th in uh, Mage 2. Uh -huh. and, and it wasn't until my reread of that book in the last year that I realized that, that was you. And I said, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's and, funny yeah and, no i uh, you know and it's funny because matt was basing <laughs> us off of um uh our appearances at the time and at that that particular time i actually did have like a uh full-length uh black leather jacket that i had picked up when i was living in colorado 
and I wore it like the turtleneck as I'm still wearing today. And, um, and I had a, a pair of round uh, spectacles or sunglasses rather. Nice. And uh, yeah, yeah, that was my, that was my go-to. And I guess, I guess Matt had hold on to the, there was a couple of photos of, I, there was a pretty, a couple of pretty good photos of Bernie and, uh, uh, and I, and I think Matt together at that Grendel show, I'd love to find those. Uh, I, I didn't, I don't have any copies of them, but, um, I think but there was we, a spread in the back of one of the books that was, I think uh, that was from the show that I did with Tim sale and Matt in oh, um, okay. Seattle, actually. That was uh, Grendel Day and uh, Patrick. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Grendel Day. You're right. So, you know, again, I'm going through and, and highlighting a little bit. So I'll show you uh, a little bit of uh, I'll go in and delineate the face and, and uh, hood area a little bit. So cool. this is uh, a white paint that I use. OK, so I'm using this. Uh, it's called Pro White. Uh, mm -hmm. It is the most opaque white correction fluid that I've that I've come across. It's you know, it's water soluble. Uh, but I use a lot of times as, you know, to actually paint with. Um, and I use uh, just a standard old uh, Prang watercolor set. I also use uh, Windsor Newton Designer's Gouache. That's the best gouache that for me, uh, I'll use that too. But what I'll do is, is I will take a little bit. Okay, let's see here. All right, well, I'm just going to go with some of the white right now. So I'm just going to go straight in. So just take the, the brush here. Just, you know, get it, get it to a fine point. You know, this is not a special, you know, I, I have these brushes that I've used for so many years. They kind of have their own, their own tip. Yeah. Uh, so that's the, uh, that's the, that's the white right there. All right. So let's see here. And again, real, real light. Uh, uh, okay. Do you ever have a problem with the pro white jar uh opening that it that it, it it seals itself shut or do you not as you or you're not messy and that's a silly question uh <laughs> well you know i've never had it like i've never had it uh uh solidify on me but it's water soluble so if that happened to somebody i think you could just you know run water over it and uh and it would probably come loose yeah, it happened to a friend of me of mine, not me, but someone I know. Uh huh. Sure, Ben. <laughs> so you know, again, I'm I'm trying to keep real light with the yeah. with the brush here. You know, it's his hair. So trying to again, you know, it again. I've kind of laid in a uh, a a base to work off of, so I can start loosening it up a little bit. You know, just go a little crazy with the, you know, that sort of thing, the hair. It's crazy to not know how many layers are gonna get in there, Eli. Like you don't know how much the Polaroid is gonna develop. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and you know, it's funny because it's kind of like I'm I'm figuring out as I go along yeah. too. You know, uh, I'm gonna use a, a finer point, I think. So it's another brush. Oh no, that's one. That's two. Let's see. absolutely amazing to watch this happen yeah this looks fine i got a fire i love I doing just... these oh, wow all three at once <laughs> go ahead ben <laughs> you, i just uh... i go ahead go ahead <laughs> is the is the pro black anything of, of note or or is you know i didn't even know that i have never worked i've never used that before i yeah. for, for black um uh, I use uh, Sumi ink. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the, the most densest uh, black that I can think of as far as for paint. Uh, you know, I'll just use, I'll use the designer's gouache, the lamp black uh, for that. So again, you know, I'm, I'm delineating the, uh, the eye here. Yeah. So is, is that, is that white Prismacolor pencil that, that, that that's your, yeah, that was white Prismacolor pencil. And then over to the top, I just do just a little bit of, of white and then I'll just tap it a little bit with my finger and, uh, and then, you know, and then just leave it, you know, that, and that's a, that's a real trick too, is learning to just leave stuff. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times, again, what, what'll happen is, is I'll go over the whole page with all this toning and such. 
And then I get to a point where I go, okay, stop. And then I'll let it sit overnight. And then I'll look at it the next day. And it's like, I'll think, oh, there's so much left to do on this piece. And then I'll look at it the next day and I'm like, there's an hour left on this piece tops, <laughs> you know? And so sometimes it's really good to get away from a piece because you're, you can get so caught up in all the tones and shades and stuff like that, that you're maybe not seeing uh, where it's, again, getting back to what you said earlier, Ben, about jazz and, and the piece kind of taking on a life of its own. If you give it a little space, you can see that maybe it's already going somewhere and follow and follow that direction you know um you know if you've got a deadline it's got to go out it's got to go out um you know that that's a factor too sometimes but but you know if you've got you know some time i think it's good sometimes it's not bad to work on a couple of different pieces simultaneously mm -hmm. and then you can come back and um you know the, again kind of gauge things so you know go in here with the eye and just, and again, just a little bit, just a little bit to, to define, you know, yeah. and again, kind of get that crazy in there. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> you know, and, you know, and again, it's like, it's so, it's like, well, that looks good. Okay. Let me paint it some more. It's like, stop, you know, that's enough, you know, get in. And it's always fun to go in and do this part, you know, cause you get to, you know, put in the teeth and you know, it's always fun. And again, you know, leave the, you know, maybe just a hint at the, at the bottom row. And again, that's, that's looking pretty good, you know, so. Do yeah. you draw for fun anymore? Like, uh, do, do you sketch or, and I guess I don't mean warm ups, but I mean, like, if you're at the, at a bar or if you're. Um, on you vacation know, or I tell you, I tell you, it's it's funny. I would like to do that more. I yeah. just, I'm just, I draw so you know, I'm working on stuff so much that uh, uh, I mean, I mean, it sounds kind of corny, but it, I really do have fun. It, it's is all fun. fun. Yeah, yeah, it really, it really is. You know, but that's, um, but that's, uh, that's very clear when. When we look at it, yeah, it's absolutely. Clear you're having, yeah, and time. I, I mean, dude, I, I, guys, I'm, I always have fun working on yeah. Epi. I mean, <laughs> it's always, you know, he's like an old friend yeah. at this point, you know, and uh, it's, it's always kind of neat to go. So you'll see here where you know I've outlined, you know, a little bit of the hand and and all that, and that's, that's pretty close to done. And it's funny, I'm looking here at the screen. Uh, so, you know, the screen is kind of illuminating the, uh, I don't know, turning it off and yeah, that kind of hides it. So there's a lot more shades of color here. There's a lot more, this is kind of opaque, making it look more opaque. If I put my hand over this, you can kind of see, All right. you know, so there's, it, there's even more depth. So I think, uh, you know, when this is finished, uh, or done, you know, what I'll do is, is, you know, I'll take a few. I'll scan this and we can show everybody the finished piece at the end so they can see, you know, the shades and, and everything that come in. Um, let's see here. So, so, so that's, that's good for the hair and the eye. That's, that looks pretty good. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of the blue and again, go back to my um, uh, praying watercolor set that I was showing you earlier. And, uh, I'll get a little bit of blue going here uh, in the paint tray. Um, let's see here. And I'll mix in a little bit of the white. And if, you know, if it gets too, too blotchy with different colors in here, I just put it under the sink and just wash it out, uh, wash it out lightly uh, to get back to the original tone. So, so I'm just kind of mixing the white and a bit of the blue, a little bit of black. Uh, and this, the, the pro right, the pro white has a certain, there's a certain quality to the, um, to the paint where it doesn't, it doesn't flake off the cans on paper, you know? So that's another thing too, is you want to get a certain amount of liquidity, I guess, is that the right word uh, to it? So, so you don't want to get it too thick. Uh, and sometimes with gouache, that can be a problem more than working with the pro white on the canson paper. 
uh, I've discovered if you're trying to use it to <clears throat> define a line. I mean, a gouache, a gouache wash is, is great on the canvas on paper. Uh, for the line work, sometimes if it gets too thick, it, it can flake off. So, you know, I'll just take a, a standard sheet of paper. This is and just kind of uh, work off, you know, kind of get my line to where I want it. So let's see. So here, start to define the edge of Epi's cowl. And this is kind of fun to part. This part is kind of fun too, because, you know, I, I like doing the, the, you know, the little uh, curls around his, uh, I'll just go back to that in a second. There. This is pro white mixed with the prang. Yes. And, and the prang is, that's like the cheapest watercolor set. That's what you get for a kid, right? Is that, is that what you were saying? Uh, yeah, but a lot of people, but you know, people have been using them forever. And Prang oh. is not, it's not the same as like, um, like Rose Art. I don't know how to, I don't know how to describe this. You're talking about uh, paint sets for kids. Yeah, There's yeah. a certain quality to the Prang cut watercolors that is not the same as, you know, like the, you know, like Crayola puts out watercolors. It's uh, like kind of like creamier. It's not, it's not, it's got, it's, not, it's just got more of a density. There's a yeah. certain vibrancy to it interesting it looks so cool man and you know sometimes you know uh uh if it again i'm I'm kind of applying this in layers uh and again it's it's showing up much brighter here on the camera it's a much more subtle tone uh on the original piece so so and again you can see where you know this is all coming into you know the definition is starting to all come out um let's see here so i love the detail of like the, these like little curly cues on the cape but i don't know where i originally saw them but it's something i do all the time in my art and especially when i'm drawing like a cape you know i think uh uh i think it was like sinkevich and miller and those guys were all doing that stuff back then yeah. you know and, and even like Todd McFarlane and in, in everybody, like, man, yeah. you know, and it, it's funny because I think it goes back to like, I don't know, like Ralph Steadman, you know, like, uh, yeah, Gonzo illustration, you know, Absolutely. yeah. And, uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll go back, uh, up here. Let's see. Let me move that over. Yeah. So you know, again, what do you look for in the blue that you're making here? Like it's kind of like a light, dirty blue kind of thing. Um, I'm just, I'm, you know, it's funny. Uh, it, it's, it's almost kind of like a, a baby blue in the fin in the piece that you can't quite see it here. It's, it looks really light there. It's not quite as light mm -hmm. uh, in the, on the original that I'm working on here. Um, I'm just trying to get it to really stand out. You know, like really, because this is his cow, uh, the top of his head. Oh, okay. So I want it to be the most, uh, uh, to, to leap to the forefront. Also, when I put this down, it looks really bright, but then it it will dry three or four shades darker uh, a lot of times. So, mm -hmm. you know, again, that's something that's like kind of an acquired, you know, an acquired look, you know, is, is getting it, is learning you know how much white to add and then gauging that in with uh how much it's going to dry uh in the final do you put a and sealer again, of any type at the end or uh you know it's funny uh i don't um uh, uh and the reason it, it it doesn't smear that's the thing that's great about prism okay. color too cool uh this stuff doesn't smear none of this stuff smears and uh, it's really funny. Um, many years ago, I was working on a uh, aliens uh, predator trading card for Tops, and I'd I'd actually picked the space jockey character to do, like standing, you know, pre Prometheus kind of my idea what he would look like out of that uh, big chair that he's in. And it, so anyway, I'd done this really detailed pencil drawing in watercolor and prismacolor, you know, this mixed media build up over the top of the whole thing. And I thought, well, maybe I better spray fix it because, you know, with a clear coat or something, 
And I'll never forget, I, I sprayed it. And when I sprayed it, I started watching all the tones disappear. It was acting like an eraser. And it was actually oh. making, yeah, it was really, so I don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you end up doing? Did you have to redo the piece? Um, I Well, you know, when I, again, part of my process is when I do a really, uh, a color piece, I'll do a detailed pencil base and I'll make uh, a copy of it, a photocopy. Good. And so I had that for reference and it didn't, it didn't make it, you know, it just, it just took out a lot of subtlety. Mm -hmm. So I just had to go back and rework in the tones over the top. Uh, so yeah, I had to kind of do it twice. Um, wow, I just found it uh, actually yeah. on comic art fans. Somebody owns it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It turned out it still, it still worked out just fine, but boy, after that, I never used uh I never used the the sealant ever again after that. Um, that so you have to be careful insane. with that stuff. Oh, I really got into that, man. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Because um, you know, back then it was still you know licensed work was you know it was uh, it was it was really a big deal you know to do anything that was related to like Star Wars or Alien or uh, it was it was still pretty you know, there wasn't a lot of different projects going on. So, you know, as you can see here, I'm, I'm doing more of the uh, outlining. I think the Dark Horse Alien stuff ha is, is better than it, like, needed to be. It's better than it, like, <laughs> at any rate being it's... Uh, I remember being at a Chicago show, uh, and Mark Nelson was showing me his pencil layouts for the first issue of Aliens. Wow. And it was like, holy, holy cow, man, I couldn't yeah. believe, it. you know, like you said, I mean, it was like, wow, he's really transcending the, you know, the medium, but man, we were all Giger fans. You yeah. Know? I, so I was the just opera, thinking, yeah, if I wonder, you know, if, the opera, go ahead. just, just wondering if, if, you know, because the standard was set so high by these Geiger and, and even Mobius did some designs for the first movie. So. I wonder if that all pushed everyone. That stuff, that stuff was a huge motivating factor, man. I mean, you know, when I was a kid, you know, looking at the uh, designs for um, the designs for, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, Alien and Star Wars and all that, that was, and, you know, the first batch of heavy metal, you know, issues, seeing Mobius for the first time and Drew Lay and all that. Oh my that God. was hugely inspirational. Yeah. I uh, recently sure. got a bunch a bunch of those, a uh, bunch with the Drule and Mobius and Matt Howarth. Um, oh yeah, uh, oh the annoying, is it the annoying Post Brothers. Is yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's fun. This stuff. is a great spot to add in a little commercial for Cosmic Lion Productions. We're uh, publishing a new Matt Howarth three issue series, which I'm pretty awesome. excited about. Uh, a awesome. lost tale from the '90s. It's gonna be sick. What's it gonna be called? Uh, it's called Termite Mound, and and like I said, it was completed in the '90s. It just never found a publisher until today. Awesome! Congratulations, that's Thanks. fantastic. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. And and you know, to 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 find old these old heavy metals, and it's like Mobius and Drew Lay and even Steve Bissett, and, and and then there's Matt. You know, he's, he's such a cool dude. I um, yeah, that's fantastic, man. Congratulations. That's Thanks really so great to do. That. So, uh, so anyway, uh, uh, let's see where we're at here. So as you can see, it's starting to, to all come together. And um, so what I'll do now is uh, I'll do another uh, level to this, which is uh, taking the red prism color, and then I will start. Yes, I was waiting on this. Again, adding another, uh, this is a kind of way to tie in all the elements is starting to put in the uh the outline of the red around the cape we uh have come to call some details like this like when we find little spirals and they they are ubiquitous in uh grendel comics but we we've come to call them bernieisms because it seems bernieisms? Our, yeah <laughs> <laughs> well bernie was i always like bernie spirals oh they're the best <laughs> absolute yeah. best those are the ones yeah and and we we, um, we see them a lot and and I, and I wonder if it's just kind of like people were consuming you know Grendel comics and they saw it and you know oh really is it like Kirby Crackle <laughs> <laughs> I think so I think it is 
Yeah, a burning spiral is like a Kirby crackle. I love that. Yeah. I um I I know when I when I met Bernie, uh he had just done the frontis piece uh for his run on Grendel uh with the Brian character. Yeah. Uh, and when they collected it, he did a uh, he did a frontis piece of Brian kind of hanging by ropes in this kind of uh, green hell hellscape. And uh, I, I I asked I asked Bernie, is that can I buy that front? And I still have it to this day. Oh wow! Yeah, it's a really neat piece, and I I just love Bernie's work. Yeah, I mean, and I, you know, it's funny. I'll look back at uh, the work that he did uh, on my stuff. And you know, I just I see something new in it all the time. Uh, I I just am amazed at how much uh, detail that he put in uh, with the time constraints uh, that we had. I mean, I just think it's remarkable, you know. And uh, his jam character, that uh, special that he did. Oh, the super uh, turbo injected. I still think color. that's one of the greatest single issue comics of all time. Agreed. Agreed. Agree. Yeah. agree. Yeah, I've got a color page from that too. Uh, yeah. I pulled that out of a box, uh, a, a box when I was in college, and I, I didn't know what it was. And as soon as I saw it, I said, "This is the book." <laughs> and it was I, it was really remarkable. Yeah, yeah. I didn't and see the jam till I got that uh, Madman and the Jam mm. when that, when that came out. That blew my mind because I was like yeah. huge on MC Escher as well. And then huge on all red, and then I was like, "Who is this?" Well, speaking of plugs, Bernie has done, um, I think, some new jam material too, right? That's available. Yeah, there's a trade that was available through Amazon, and uh, I think that he was going to do more. Mm -hmm. And I do, I I was working with him a little bit. I helped him set up a a T Public store. So if you if you want a jam T shirt, you can get one on T Public directly from Bernie. Oh, cool. That's really great. What other projects you guys got going on? What's uh Oh, John, what do you got going on? <laughs> oh, me? Well, I was like, you know, I'm always got interested. going on. Well, you know, it's funny you were asking about uh drawing for fun. Um so, you know, I'm working on and I think I've been mentioning this uh too for a while is uh I've been working on doing some new material of my own creator 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 own book uh, fashion and action yes and um so i'm working with clover press uh who just finished uh, a crowd uh funder for a new edition of uh, tim sale and sarah uh berm i believe is her name is um a billy 99 yeah which was yep. a book they did back in the uh, early 90s uh anyway i'm working with clover press to do a new collection of a, a new a new archival collection of the original fashion and action material uh, but this time around uh i'm working on a 20 page uh story uh to be included with it that is uh going to reintroduce um the characters and a whole new cast a whole new fashion and action crew um and so that's going to be included. And so I've been working on designs of the new characters uh, for fashion and action, wow. and uh, some redesign, some 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 redesigns of the original characters. Uh, so that's been that's that's kind of my current uh, side project that I'm busy with right now. I'm very excited about that. Uh, to be working with the guys at Clover. I did the Continental Op National Hammett illustration book. Right, with absolutely them. beautiful. And uh, I'm real excited about doing fashion and action again. Uh, the goal is to uh, is to do the archival collection and lead into a full-length story. Uh, so that would be the uh, second volume. Um, so that is uh, something I'm working on right now. I'm also uh, working on uh, a four issue mini series for IPI Comics in Australia. And I'm working with writers uh, Nancy Holder and Alan Phillipson on a, like I said, a four issue story uh, called They Call Me Midnight. And it is a uh, basically uh, an Italian mobster uh, who is a, 
centuries old vampire who has kind of tried to rehabilitate himself at least as a vampire even though he's a mobster gangster uh, but his vampire family is uh, killed by his own mob so he goes on a cross-country uh, murder spree uh, revenge spree and uh, I think one of the things I'm really excited about this project is is that the setting is 1972 oh, nice. so uh, that's a period that I'm really fond of uh, that's like a, that was kind of a, an interesting noir period in movies that was like when the Robert Altman version of The Long Goodbye came out his take on Philip Marlowe in California mm. uh, with Elliot Gould uh, mm -hmm. Also, I think of things like uh, Vanishing Point, which was a, a cross-country road movie. So it's it's kind of a like a, a road, you know. He's on the road, um, uh, and again, I'm I'm really into doing some noir stuff uh, with that project. I also started doing some covers for Fru Publications in Australia. Hmm. Uh, they are the guys that uh, publish uh, Phantom, the Phantom comics, the, the gold right. the comic strip character. And I've been a huge fan of the Phantom since I was a kid. So I'm really enjoying uh, working on these series of covers for them, uh, right. which is actually reprinting these uh, covers I've been working on, a reprints of some older phantom comics uh plus some older australian characters uh so it's very it's very uh eclectic i guess is the best way to put it really having a lot of fun with that are you um, doing the full interiors for that uh, vault, uh vampire story you were talking about yes i'm doing the covers and the interiors for it now i am going to be doing that in uh pen and ink or you know black and white uh i'm going to be working with my colorist uh, jason wright who has colored me on quite a few covers uh for in the past that he and i worked together on my uh suicide squad covers um we did a cover for uh two covers for when the movie came out the second squad movie for dc a few years back oh, yeah. and jason loves noir stuff too so we're really in sync um the look that i did the uh, eight million ways to die lawrence block adaptation in uh will kind of be it'll be kind of in that mode a little bit and jason's coloring i think will echo the the style i was using uh in that so so we're really excited about that i'm still very much open and working on getting a publisher to do more lawrence block adaptations i'm talking to a couple of different publishers right now about adapting uh another lawrence block book um i've got a couple of covers coming out that I've already turned in that I can't talk about yet, but they're really cool. Uh, pro really cool projects that I got a chance to work on. Cool. Are they in so, this style as well? or? Um, one of them is. Uh, not not with a colored paper, but, but, uh, but, uh, um, but you know, very graphic. Uh, very graphic uh, style. And I'm really excited about this. So it'll, it'll be coming out from Dark Horse. I'm hoping that we get to announce it soon so that that was a lot of, that's a lot of fun um i got a couple other things that i'm doing too but i can't quite uh talk about them yet but it's it's kind of a neat period i'm working on some really some, a lot of neat things uh with characters that i think are really cool and um so it's it's really it's really exciting stuff i'm very excited about working on fashion and action again because um you know, it's always great to get back to, you know, your own characters, you know, Absolutely. and, uh, and, uh, um, and, you know, I did the, the, okay. So I, I kept, I kept another sharpened pencil on hand. So, nice. <laughs> so, so it starts to, and it's okay. Yeah. So this comes in handy too. So anyway, as you can see, the whole piece is starting to, you know, kind of come together. Yeah. You know, it has uh, it okay. almost like a, a embossed metallic yeah. quality. This red outline is so hard; it's it's unbelievable. Yeah, thanks. No, and and so yeah, I, I want to get to the the the, the blood here. <laughs> <laughs> so this is you know again, this is where you know having the uh, the original rough kind of comes in handy because I can you know kind of look at the little pattern. It's gotten a little 
Uh, and it's all there. I can still see underneath all the layers. I can still see that's there. Can you guys still see all this? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so again, you know, going through and and outlining what, that underdrawing of the blood. That's that's preliminary red colored pencil. It's hard to tell what color it is on camera. Yeah, that's a that's a little darker red that I put under there. Uh, yeah. That was you know kind of a, a darker shade. Yeah. Uh, and so you the, drew that original red on the back of the tracing paper as well instead of yeah. white. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, that was that was also on there. All right. Is there a genre that you haven't got to do a professional work in that you would want to? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've done so much. You've done. So I mean, much. it's kind of funny, right? I mean, yeah. it's it's it's. Uh, hang on, like I, I, I I'm thinking. Um, I'm I I feel like I haven't seen you do like uh, a lot of science fiction, uh, and you know, but I, I feel like I saw you do a a commission of like a sort of Wally Wood esque, old school science fictiony, bubble helmet type of deal. Yeah, you know, um, you know, actually, now that you mention it, um, uh, you know, because I, you know, when I think of fashion and action, and when I was working on that, that was kind of that had a little bit of, um, you know, the science fiction thing in it with the cities and all that sort of thing. And when I was working on Grendel, to me, that was very kind of a science fiction thing um, uh, in its own way. But you know, actually, now that you mention it, uh, I would like to do uh, something more science fiction based. Uh, that would be a lot of fun uh, to do something that involves like, um, you know, it's funny, I, I, I the, the science fiction thing, I've done that like in the illustration. You know, as far as like doing the aliens piece, um, right, you know, right. I did some covers for Harlan Ellison, uh, some trading card art that had kind of science fiction overtones, you know, some Star Wars art, uh, you know, I guess that's more science fantasy. Um, but, you know, the idea of doing uh, a science fiction story is, uh, you know, that that would be pretty cool. I, I actually really hadn't thought of it much. I The fashion and action storyline that I'm thinking of uh, doing is got a lot of science fiction overtones nice. um so i think i would integrate that into there you know the thing about science fiction is that it's very involved uh to um you know so you gotta at least to me to really do it right unless it's a guy floating in space you know when you get into science fiction you're getting into rendering different civilizations and planets and you know ships and it can get really involved you know, so uh, it could be very demanding, uh, uh, I think. Uh, but I, but it's a challenge that I would love to uh, to undertake. Oh, I should mention too that I'm working on developing a historical graphic novel uh, that a publisher is very interested in, and it's just a matter of finishing up the proposal stage on that uh, right now. And if I end up involved with that, that will be something that. I plan to be starting on within the next, um, oh, a year or so from now, I would say. So, so is anyway, fashion I, and action still in print? Is it still being published or? Uh, the, I did the, the archival collection mm -hmm. and, uh, there's copies of it floating around, but it's technically out of print right now. Mm -hmm. And that, that collection is, it's, it's, you know, it's been out, it was, it came out like, six years ago so it's time for it's time for it to get back into print yeah and uh and so that's that's what i'm working on uh, i did a couple uh tertiary searches here online and they're going for like 60 bucks and up oh really yeah wow expensive. It, they were beautifully printed i you know uh, looks like it yeah I uh I was very fortunate with Eclipse. They were really good about you know I did everything on that. I did like the colors and the the uh, yeah you know, pencils, inks, and coloring on that. So mm -hmm. you know I kept all my my original colors. Um, so uh, and I worked in a lot. I was using like cell paint. That so there's a lot of flat tones, mm -hmm. uh, almost like a anime cartoon. So you know when it came down to doing the reprint. You know, I was I was doing all this restoration on the color to bring back a lot of the brightness and the true color and such. Oh, cool. And um, so, you know, I really spent uh, quite a bit of time on on the restoration process. 
and um and the printing on that on those books was was really nice you know so so i got real lucky with that uh how that all turned out but i have all the rights to it i have the rights to the uh, i have all the uh, digital files to reprint that mm, nice so you know it's all it's all ready to go it's just a matter of me uh getting the uh the new pages done you know i've got i've got it laid out i've got you know um all the new characters you know i've got little backgrounds on all of them um and an idea of their fashions and such i just it's just a matter of uh getting them all uh drawn <laughs> basically oh. so how many so issues it, were there there well it was uh it's there was it was backup, backup and scout. timothy truman scout oh okay and um there was it, a winter special yeah there was a it, and then winter. so so my idea was was uh i knew it was going to be an eight page i had eight page segments and i knew it was going to run at least eight issues so my uh plan was was to come up with one 64 page story that way, you know, there would be some su some substance to it rather than, you know, these one little eight page vignettes. So, uh, and I was inspired by uh, Walt Simonson and Archie Goodwin's Manhunter because they did that, this awesome one story in these like eight page segments and they fit so much story in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, they fit so much story you know, in that in those segments, it was very inspirational to me. Yeah. So were, that, were those that were those backups in another book? Those were backups in Detective Comics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so so that I did that, and then after that, I got the approval to do a winter and summer special. So I think the total fashion and action, I think it's about one hundred and twenty plus pages uh, total. I think is is the run of it, but it's all like almost one storyline. Um, so anyway, like I said, you know, I'm, it's all kind of coming together here. Um, yeah, man. Let's see, well, I have another process kind of question, and just like maybe a little advice to give to, like how you said people who might be trying this method, or you know, just doing comics in general. Oh, let me see, uh, let me spot like that. Oh my God, it's looking amazing. So you can see. Yes. And you can see the subtlety a little more, you know, than in the, um, than in the, uh, uh, you know, the close-ups that we're doing right now. So you can see where it's, you know, all coming together. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. So the, the question I was going to pose here, just when, when you're doing a piece like this, how do you deal with when you make a mark or you do something that you feel like is a mistake or, or you feel like, you you messed up a line. Do you feel? Oh, there's no mistakes. Ex oh, okay. Interesting. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> well, you know, I I feel like that. You just roll with it and you kind of work it in. Or do you? You know, like um, you know, it's funny. Uh, uh, I'm teasing. Uh, there can be, <laughs> but that happens sometimes, I guess. But or it's I wouldn't say it's a mistake. It's like a direction that it goes that you didn't foresee. How's that? How's that for a mistake? Yeah, that makes um, sense. Uh, but. Uh, but I think a lot of times the best thing is, I, I think what happens is, is um, again, you know, if I think that there's, you know, again, with this colored pencil, you know, you can lightly erase. Uh, you oh, know, can you, you, you recenter again so we can see that again? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. You can, you can, you can erase off. Um, uh, oh, okay. you, can, you can erase off the, um, some of the color. Uh, a lot of times uh, what I'll do is, is I'll let it sit. If I feel like it's not going in the right direction, mm -hmm. uh, I will let it sit. And like you said, uh, you know, I'll, I'll figure out a way to make it go um, uh, in a different path, I guess is what I'm saying, you know, mm -hmm. like how to, how to kind of, you know, make it work. And I really, I really have to say, you know, I, I've kind of done this for long enough now that um you know, I feel like a lot of stuff kind of works out, you know, I don't really uh, run into, you know, and, you know, I guess part of it is, uh, is that that's kind of why um, I do these steps like I was showing you earlier. Sure. You know, so, so that way, you know, I kind of, you know, like, you know, I can kind of look at the, um, 
the rough and any kind of structural issues I can kind of I can kind of pick up on early on you know and and so to me it's what's really important in doing a color piece is uh is making sure your foundation which means your line art base is is um is right on you know and that it's solid because because it's like because of this, the very reason what we're talking about here, it's really hard to go back and fix something once it's down in color, you know? Right. But one thing that we have now that we didn't have back then is we have Photoshop. So <laughs> the really great thing is, is if you see like an arm or a leg or something like that, and this is for a published piece, sure, uh, not for a commission, because uh, the commission, you know, you're, you're doing a piece of original art for somebody. And here I'm actually just smearing a little bit with my finger. I'll do that sometimes too. Uh, again, not pressing too hard, just kind of lightly. Um, but you know, in Photoshop, you can you can alter a lot of things. And and you know, this leg's too long or this leg's too short, or you know, you move an eye over a little bit. You know, you have that option. You know, and that's always nice um, to be able to do. But uh, but I you know, like I said if I feel like something, you know, isn't going in the right way, a lot of times let's sit overnight, I'll wake up the next day. And a lot of times it seemed, it, whatever seemed problematic to me, uh, I will be able to see a way to, um, uh, I don't know if fix it's the right word, but take it in a direction where, you know, it works, I guess. Kind of look at it through fresh eyes and just see what. Yeah, I mean, and that's, and that's the most important thing, at least for me. Uh, is to not get so uh, caught up in, you know, what seems to be not working, that you're not focusing on what is working, you know. And again, uh, it's amazing to me how, you know, you can be working on a piece and there will be some corner of it that you can just be like, wow, that just doesn't look right. And it might be an area of the piece that no one is even going to ever notice, you know. And, and uh, so a lot of times it's, it's, it's important to pick up your focus, which is normally the face, the expression, the hands, you know, the, the, the power of whatever is going on in the piece and don't let the minutia uh, uh, bother you, you know, because a lot of times uh, it's, it's the force of the piece that is the most important thing as opposed to the technical the technical success of it, if that nice. makes sense. Yeah, for sure. All right, so I'm going to go in and just do a little bit of uh, highlighting around the flesh. So again, I've, I've mixed a little bit of the um, mixed a little bit of the, the pro white. I'm just going to delineate a little more of his face here. Let's put in a few crazy wrinkles. John, this is a kind of uh, non-comics question, but it's still a creation question. I used to ask this all the time in my Cosmic Lion radio. What kind of music do you listen to when you're creating? Do you uh, listen to music? Do you listen to podcasts, radio? Um, How do you keep yourself? Well, I listen to uh, a lot of different things. Um, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's it's all over the map. Uh, sometimes I'll have, uh, you know, nowadays, you know, they have they'll have whole channels of old TV shows, and sometimes I'll just let the shows run one after the other. Yeah. Uh, now I'll give you some recent examples of some things I've had run. So I have a TV over here on the right. I I'll, I won't actually look at the TV. I'll let it run like a radio, basically. Yeah. And I'll listen to these old shows. And I'll listen to the dialogue a lot of times. A lot of times I'm really intrigued in, by some of the shows that sometimes are really kind of well-written. And a lot of times you can literally say the, the line before the guy says it because <laughs> you know what they're going to say. But there's a Mission Impossible channel on um, Pluto. Yeah. And when I've got a really tight deadline, I don't know why, maybe I like to increase the anxiety. <laughs> I'll let it run. And it's so funny to have the uh, opening theme song, you know, because uh, it's yeah. like, 
kind of feel like I'm living it, you know. One and, of the greatest uh, theme songs of all time. Right? Yeah. And it's so funny because, you know, a lot of times the dialogue and the plot lines will be much the same. And I know that things are getting rough when I'm hearing the beginning of the Mission Impossible theme song for the fourth or fifth time, because that means that, you know, the hours are just spinning by. And, and it's funny because I'll have on like an old movie channel and the same thing will happen, which is, you know, I'll hear the music pick up. You know, I've been, I'll be really deep into the work and I'll listen to some old movie dialogue or whatever. And then the music picks up and it always gets really loud when the movie's over with these old movies. <laughs> And I'll look up and I'll see the end. And I know by the time I've seen the third or fourth the end that I've, you know, it's like, oh man, time is time is fleeting, you know? <laughs> so right now I'm taking the black pencil and I'm just uh, tightening up a little bit of the areas around the cape, oh. between the cape and the, uh, the cloak. Oh, and the, that's cool. You know, and again, this isn't really, uh, you know, this is a little bit of fine tuning can also do this with an exacto knife and do a little bit of etching, but I prefer just doing it like this. Uh, Music-wise, uh, on YouTube, there's a couple of synthwave compilations. Oh, cool. Uh, that uh, somebody kind of introduced me to that. I mean, I've always loved instrumental electronica. Uh, I was not familiar with the whole synthwave thing and started listening to that uh, a few years back. And uh, some of that stuff, uh, It'll be like a three, four hour loop of that. And uh, I find sometimes that's great music to work to. Right. Because it has this kind of like relentlessness to it. Uh, and there's no beginning or end and no yeah, yeah. theme song or end credits to. There's some, you. there's some, some of that stuff is really awesome. You know, uh, okay. sometimes I'll listen to soundtracks. I mean, I think this, uh, the new Dune movie, uh, this new soundtrack from uh, Hans Zimmer, mm -hmm. I think is the best thing he's done so far. I, I think he kind of went up a notch. Uh, nice. I don't know if you're a fan of his stuff or not, but absolutely, his, yeah, sure. his, uh, his Dune soundtrack has, he's, he's going somewhere new, uh, I think, in, the, in his use of the different sounds that he's using, the different kind of range of music that he's trying to do. Um, I'm really interested in seeing where he goes next because I think there's some stuff on the new Dune soundtrack that is that is really really amazing uh, stuff. So I listen to like a whole lot of different things, and you know, you know, I love uh, uh, you know, like I guess you call it old new wave now. Um, that's really great. Uh, you know, I'll listen to Blondie anytime. You know, and yeah. and. Uh, it was funny. I uh, someone sent me uh, uh, Mike Ness from Social Distortion got I don't know key to the city or something, and I don't know it was L.A. maybe, and uh, it just immediately brought back memories of uh, the Social Distortion album I picked up in 1990. And I'm like, oh, I got to listen to that, you know. And I haven't listened to that in a million years, so yeah, uh, that stuff's really great. Um, so I, I'll. I'll listen to just about anything. I always like hearing about new music too. You guys got any recommendations or? Mm. I got this. Uh, I got this uh, jazz Afrobeat fusion band called Coco Roco. I love Coco. it. Coco Roco. Okay, I'll check them out. Oh. Coco Roco. Okay. Interesting, oh. man. Do I? Lee, if you uh, anything? Ah, uh, jeez. Um, I listen to so many different things now. I went through like a little Jackson Brown phase there for uh -huh. a minute. I was listening to a lot of that. Um, there's a guy named Jean-Pierre de Cerf. He has an album called Space Oddities, okay. 1975 to 1979. I've been listening to. Space Oddities. And what's his name? Jean-Pierre. And the last name is D-E-C-E-R-F. Oh, what's the other one? Uh, I'll check that out. Um, I think there's another one. My brother turned me on. I can't remember. It's, I think it's on SoundCloud. But this was one of the best albums I've listened to in a while. Cool, cool. I mean, this it's so great to uh, discover new new music. Yeah, you know? I love it. I feel like I used to be like a, a like a this amazing like source of new music for my friends and stuff, and now I'm just listening to the same like. Great now just comics. Concert. Now you're just a source of comics. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> Not music, just comics. So I'm taking the the white paint again, and I'm gonna go back over the uh, the top of uh, 
Epi's straps. Oh, can you sweet. see that? Yeah, now we can. Yeah. Okay. Just just a little bit here and there. There was strength. That's the name. That's one of your bands. No, he's you know he's using oh restraint. using res restraint. So and again you know uh, again the combination of the paper using the gray prismacolor and then the white you know this range starts to open up in here and again I'll let it sit and then and then a lot of times like yep yeah, it's done or maybe just a little hint of uh, a little hint of something here and there uh, later like you know for example I'm getting to a point on this where. You know, I'm ready to let it sit overnight and then I can get up the next day and, you know, be able to finish this up, you know, so it's Absolutely. it's definitely getting to where it needs to be. Um, and, you know, you get a certain amount of paint on the brush and it's really great when it's just the right amount of paint, like what's happening here. And it just kind of and just kind of is just enough to get you to where you need to be with the uh, the highlights and such. Yeah. And again, I, you know, uh, you know, again, there, there's a certain subtlety to the um, to the paper and the color here that's not quite showing up uh, on the camera here. But uh, but like I said, when this is all finished, you know, I'll, I'll make a scan of it and um, we can put up, you know, what the actual finished art is, like do a pan over it uh, to show that. But I hope this is uh, of uh, some use to some artists out there that are trying to work in different mediums and such and i hope it's uh i hope it i hope it opens up um a little bit more of uh of how i of how i work in this uh medium doing this sort of thing yeah yeah was... for sure i i think the combination of uh seeing the the order of operations as you mix dry and then wet is really one of the most valuable things yeah absolutely um, again, it's, you know, it's, it's funny, because like I said, it's a, a form of control, you know, it's being able to, to be able to control the, uh, the direction that the piece is going in, uh, you know, by, by using a variety of, a variety of uh, materials. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it comes down to, I think, when you're working with a variety of different materials, and you're layering, it it is it's key to have that that final opacity at the top of it and and again you know it's it's also key to kind of have a blend of the opacity but keep it transparent uh too so you can see the layers that are underneath mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah for sure because um, that adds like a depth to what to it all as well and a lot of things you know like a lot of things kind of form themselves you know it's like it's like it just kind of it kind of takes on a life of its own you know like we were like we were talking about earlier yeah, right. and that's that's what the beauty of a lot of this stuff is uh and again you know i love looking at uh you know like you know guys like sinkevich and mckean and, and those type of guys where mm -hmm. you know the paint just dries you know in a certain direction and you know they'll push it around with a highlight here a highlight there and the whole thing just kind of forms its own mm -hmm its own reality you know and how I would you attack the same type of process if you were working on a character like like say superman that was like clear cleaner and, and less gritty dirty would you, would you go about the process differently um or, go ahead no just yeah that's it oh like you mean like if i was working on a color piece like this of superman like a commission or something yeah but but like using these like you know starting on black paper you know, would you do something to make the texture seem smoother? Would you? Oh, would you... yeah, yeah. That's a great question. Yeah. Um, when I'm working on, uh, when I'm doing something like, you know, that's more, yeah, like Superman. Uh, and again, you know, when I'm working on those guys, a lot of times I like doing like uh, an older version of them, you know, like a golden age where it's sure. almost kind of uh, an animation style. Mm -hmm. uh you know or or when i'm working on cover recreations there's a certain yeah when i'm applying the uh you know and you got somebody that's gritty like uh you know like swamp thing or 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 you know uh, a batman villain or grendel or somebody like that you know mm -hmm. then the texture allows itself you know lends itself to do something like that if you're working on 
if I'm working on somebody like, say, uh, uh, like you said, Superman, or if I'm doing an animated character like Space Ghost or, or uh, you know, or a female character, you know, that has smooth skin. Uh, and, you know, that texture is kind of a challenge because you don't want it to look like a skin condition. <laughs> um, and so so what I do with that <clears throat> in that case um, is uh, I'll do the same kind of process here that like I've got here to mm -hmm. lay in the initial color and all that. But that's where the gouache will come in handy a lot of times because I will take and make a very light, very light, almost watercolor uh, level of the gouache with just a hair of opacity in it. And then I will uh, take like a, a broader brush, like something like this, for example, you know, there's a little bit more of a tip on it and, and get it wet. And let's say I wanted to make this hand more smooth and I would take like a light white gouache uh, and, and go over the whole uh, thing here. And it would kind of dry in this kind of transparency Mm -hmm. And it would form more of a, a smooth, less less hard edge texture, and then maybe a hint of light water, light prismacolor on the top. So, like Superman, if you're doing his suit, or say you're doing his arm, you know, same thing. Like you know, maybe like something like this, but then like a, a light blue kind of wash over the whole thing, and then that kind of ties it all in together. And gives it like you like you were saying, Ely, like more of a smoother, uh, uh, smoother look. And again, that's just that's just been done from uh, years of of working in this style and just kind of going, gee, how am I how am I going to get that effect? You know, and that's that was my conclusion on uh, on how to achieve that. Um, and that can be kind of tough sometimes, you know, especially when you're working with um, skin textures, because again, you you want you know, if you're doing like a, you know, a hard edge detective character, then it's great. But, you know, if you're doing a, a femme fatale and she's, you know, supposed to be stunningly beautiful, you know, the, the, it can look like uh, marks, you know, as opposed to, as opposed to shading. Um, right. So you can see again, you can see how this whole thing is starting to, you know, turn into, you yeah, know, where sure. it's gone from when we started. And again, I'll, I'll hold it up you know, for, uh, you know, hold it up and you can see, you know, more where it's going. So, you know, we're, we're, we're slowly, you know, it's, it's transforming into, you know, a, a, a full piece. So the, the last aspect here is the, um, uh, that, you know, I want to bring out is the, uh, the, the cross area behind him. And so what I'm going to, so this is how I normally work. What I'm going to do is, is go in and illuminate some of the area behind here. And then I'm going to, then that will be a good stopping point for tonight. And then I'll let it sit. And in the morning, I'll be able to bring out the highlights of, of what I want to emphasize. Uh, so, so a lot of times when I'm working on a piece, you know, I'll get all the fine tuning in, you know, all the details and the character and all that. And if there's any kind of background uh, texture to bring out the character, uh, I'll wait to do that last uh, sometimes because I want to gauge how much of the background I want to show to, to pop out the character. And I'll normally start by putting a fairly light tone or and then I'll know, I'll let it sit overnight and kind of look at it in the morning and that'll give me kind of a an extra push as to, okay, you know, here's where I'm going to pull up more of a highlight. Here's where I'm going to push back uh, the background. So, so I'll go in here a little bit here at the end for tonight and, mm -hmm. uh, and put that in. Is this the same or a different white shade? This is now, this is, this is, I'm going uh, straight with uh, the straight white here. I'm not going to mix in like the gray. Okay. Uh, because because I want to kind of keep it um, basic, you know, it's because it is a background tone. And I'm going to go ahead and go over the blood that I that I kind of uh, I started putting in earlier because I, in the end, what I'll do is is I'll pull out the blood with the paint, the highlights and such. So you know, I'll just go over all of it here uh, because what I'll do again is I'll probably go over it with like a light watercolor 
and make yes. it slightly opaque and then go over it with a little bit of tone. And, and again, in the final result, it'll, it'll, um, it'll make sense. <laughs> I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, but here is, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, the most important thing is getting, is getting this whole thing uniform, you know, in terms of the, um, oh, in terms of making it stand out. So that's what I'm going to work on now. And then and to the darker, the white is the, and then when you go in with the red, the more that will pop out as well. Too. Yes. Yeah. Right. And, and again, it's, it's, again, I'm, I'm, I'm really, you know, I, I approach this kind of care carefully uh, because they can always go darker it's harder to go back up lighter um, yeah, another thing too if uh, if you know somebody wants to that hasn't worked with this can song before if they want to get into it another thing to look out for <clears throat> when you're going in uh, with the uh, pencil and you're starting to make a solid area like this uh, you still want to keep it light because there will come a point where the grain will start to fill in which again if that's what you're shooting for no big deal but it's uh, but if you go in and try to erase a lot of times again, when you're erasing with the with these erasers, uh, it will start to smooth out the grain, and so you won't get that that texture will start to disappear. You know, yeah. we'll and again, see. that's not it's not a big deal. It's just a it's just a subtlety. Yeah, that, another, I'm sure that's a note to play. Yeah. Or exactly, yeah. Ben. Like another, you know, if you do that, perhaps accidentally, you could work that in somehow with a texture or yeah. like a, a pop yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, uh, you know, it's funny because, uh, you know, I was, you know, I was talking to Matt about this too, about the texture stuff and all that. And, and, you know, his whole thing is, we'll just keep pressing down and just fill it all in. <laughs> and, you know, and that's, that's a solution too. You know, you can do yeah. the, the gouache wash that I was talking about earlier, mm -hmm. but if you really, you know, if you really push, you can, again that kind of for me that's kind of like giving up some of that control that i like having over mm -hmm. the over the page because i'm like well you know i i'm not quite sure how that's gonna how that's gonna play out but that does work sometimes too so but yeah no this is this is turn so cool. yeah. <laughs> i mean like and so you know i you know speaking of so I am do, I am doing Grendel commissions, um, right. you know I and I will take them on. Uh, I'm working with um, uh, Steve Borok at ComicLink.com, and uh, and he's handling uh, my commissions now and my original art sales, mm -hmm. and I'm working with him through ComicLink. And uh, Steve's great. I've known Steve forever and we've been friends for a long time and I'm really excited to be working with him. So if anyone wants uh, a Grindle commission, I am taking on new commissions now, uh, a limited number. Um, I don't do a lot of, of uh, Grindle commissions. I, when I do them, I try to make them, um, you know, unique. Um, I love doing them. They're, you know, it's a great character. Do you um, mostly get epis or have you done, I feel like I've mostly only seen. You know, uh, I, I, most of the time people, you know, it's funny. Uh, no one's requested a Christine Spar. I'd love to do a Christine Spar. Uh, uh, I always liked that character, but I did one recently that was a, that was uh, a Brian with epi. And uh, that was really cool because I'd never done the Brian character before. Um, I did a Hunter Rose story for the for Matt's uh, black, white, right. black, black, That's white, right. and reds. Yeah. I also did a, a Grendel pinup, a uh, Hunter Rose pinup. Yeah. I've done. Let's see. I've done a. I've done a. I think I've done Grendel. I've done a Grendel Prime uh, gallery piece. Uh, I think for the War Child collection, mm. and I've done a Brian commission. I've done Hunter, uh, uh, and I've done a couple of Hunter commissions. Uh, but I haven't done a Christine Spar, so um, so I'm I'm open to any version. But but yeah, I I when people ask me for a uh, Grendel commission, uh, it's usually Epi, and uh, and it's always fun. I always again I I've always loved doing Epi, um, and it's really cool to me to see how how much how long the character is still 
yeah. has lasted, you know, and that it's still a really well thought of uh, character. That's really cool. What's yeah. so you're, dynamic you're in the hunter. pantheon? Yeah, good man. Your hunter pinup has that great cast shadow, all distorted. Remember that, anyway? Yeah, I, 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 I real, I was real happy with that piece. You know, it's funny because. Um, uh, that again, that was that period when I had just finished working on uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and, and I'd actually done Joseph Conrad's Secret Asian after that for Classics Illustrated. And I was really into like German Expressionism art. Uh, I was really into uh, movie, German Expressionism movie, you know, what stills and production designs I could see. And um, uh, and so, you know, I wanted to get that, give that kind of an old, uh, like an old silent German movie look. But the thing with the silhouette was my inspiration was Sergei Argonne's uh, Mad Magazine. He used to, in Mad Magazine, he would have these uh, little doodles in the margins. Yes. And it was, uh, and it would be like these characters doing something, you know, it'd be like a, a, a you know, some guy, you know, patting a head on the kid, uh, patting a, a kid on the head. You know, like you know, being real nice and stuff, and then in the silhouette, he's like throttling the kid. <laughs> yeah. You know? and, yeah. and, uh, and and he had a million of those. I mean, there were like I don't know, twenty of those in each issue of Mad or something. It seemed yeah. like, and it would be in the margin. So, you know, uh, so there you go. There's a little behind the scenes on that. Oh, uh, that, so was, cool. that was my inspiration. <laughs> for that's amazing. For that. But I think that that is, I think Argone has got that from, I think that is some kind of traditional, I don't know, shadow puppets, whatever. I don't, I'm not Probably. sure where it came from, but oh my gosh, I used to love uh, doing that. So it's just funny. Uh, it just struck me working on that piece um, uh, to do it that way. And I was like the, the Hunter Rose character. I was, you know, it seems so, Hunter is so, seems so personal to me. It seems so much Matt's character mm. that, you know, it, to me, it's like a creative challenge to figure out how to interpret that character. And so when I'm thinking of doing a Hunter Rose piece, I'm thinking of, you know, Matt, Matt's approach to the character, because I think it's very much linked to how that that character is. You know, I think it's very person. It's very a very personal character, I think. Uh, you know, that's how I, I perceive it. It's it's kind of like when I'm working on Superman. If I'm doing a Superman commission, I think very much of the Schuster art, you know, and uh, there's only one or two guys, I think, that really, there was this one guy, Fred Ray, uh, that I think uh, did some covers, some really well. He did the one where Superman's got the eagle on his arm and uh, the shield, you know, red, white, and blue shield behind him. Yeah. Uh, famous Golden Age cover that really captured... I think the spirit of, um, you know, of that character, at least from that era. Oh, yes. You did that piece as a, as a commission, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's another commission of yours that I love too. It's a, it's a Batman one that you just recently posted. And I think it was a, a Gothic Batman. It's real triangular. Uh, oh, the deco, the art deco. deco yeah. The deck. Yeah. <laughs> Again, you know, I, I, you know, it's, it's funny. It's if, that somebody actually was you know requested they said i like your angular stuff can you do can you do a batman piece like that mm -hmm. and so i was you know more than happy to oblige you know because uh i love working in uh you know i love working in that really graphic kind of style i mean i'm very open to that sort of thing but you know a lot of people like things having more of a uh a representational look, I guess, is the best way to put it. So, you know, uh, but, you know, the, the fellow that requested that specifically wanted to wanted to go in that direction. I'm about yeah. to use the uh, pencil shot. So. Oh, yeah. A little sound effect for you. <laughs> Save <laughs> but, that uh, for my sound effects record. Oh, man, it's it's I've had friends that I've been on the phone with and they, they say it's quite fierce uh, sounding. <laughs> over the phone but i'll tell you what it gets the job done you know i yeah. mean you know I mean, better than a hand twisted one um yeah yeah well so so the problem with the hand twisted ones is is that the uh, especially the prisma color has a certain softness to it 
and yeah. it's always it's always breaking off in the uh, yeah. yeah. So you know, I can do a little cleanup here oh, yeah. with uh, the pencil, and again, you know, it's okay to use just a little bit of the black just to fine tune the edges. And I think uh, so. So I've laid a I've laid a, a basic pattern of the white. And again, it's much more subtle looking on the uh, on the original right now. Um, so it's more of a darker gray. So in the morning, I will go in and bring up a little bit of highlight, probably like I have over here. I will probably bring up in this area, but I want to kind of leave it for now. And I'm going to just go ahead and put a little bit of uh, highlight in the the uh, is uh the fork thank you <laughs> sorry <laughs> just kind of no, getting no, no. thinking about uh so so guys any other questions you might have about process or anything fire away oh man this is very illuminating you know yeah. there's uh seeing all the layers and how it, how it developed step by step uh, quite the thing yeah i, I hope was... i hope uh i hope that uh i i'm you know communicating clearly you know the York, process yeah. here and i hope that showing this is showing i'm i i mean i i hope we're taking this to a point where it's you know that people can can see how this is is being done so no absolutely uh, and i mean saying saying things is about half of the battle and then seeing it done is the other half of the battle as far as getting the idea you know so when we're delivering both of these things, I think people will be able to, you know, I would encourage people to try to just like get a black piece of paper and, and follow along with this now that. Yeah. Like, and, again, end, you know? <laughs> yeah and again, you know, like I said, you know, I think something that discouraged me when I was younger and, and, you know, to this day, if I see somebody doing an example of something, you know, it's like, even if you can't get it to look like what the person is doing, you know, follow the direction that your work is going and, mm -hmm. and, and right. take it in your own in your own path you know right and uh and yeah i think it, it's funny i was just thinking when i was a kid you know they, they'd have a how to draw people or how to draw comics it'd be step one it would be like an oval step two it would yeah. be an oval with a slot for the eyes and a <laughs> slot for the nose and then the third panel is this completely rendered face you know <laughs> like, yeah. like you're just supposed to like wait a minute how am i supposed to get from you know the little slot nose line for the nose to this perfectly it's it's so it's so um uh difficult you know to, yeah. to understand you know sometimes how to how to uh how to work uh, because a lot of times the processes don't really show, like you were saying, they don't show all the layers a lot of times. You know, they just kind of skip, they skip all of these different uh, uh, steps. So Well, and there's there's so much that's intuitive with an artist, like who's been doing it as long as you have. You're doing things and you're not even thinking about them, you know? And so, like, you know, that's why it's helpful to watch and listen, because, you know, as an up and coming cartoonist, you're maybe not seeing or thinking all of these things, whereas you're like, it just comes intuitively to you. So, yeah, this I is think, helpful. Yeah. And, you know, for me, I think a lot of this has just come through uh, uh, years of just doing it, you know absolutely and and it's so it's just an acquired it's an acquired thing and it's like you you know you're talking about mistakes earlier and you know i've made you know uh, in the process of learning you know i've made a number of mistakes but i feel like and you know you there's you've always got to learn and push yourself and 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 do new things but you definitely get to a point where you know you kind of get to where you feel like okay i've i've figured out a few things you know, but to get to that point, you got to go through this process of, uh, and you can't get discouraged by it, you know, and it's easier said than, than done, but, uh, but, you know, and I, and I've, man, you know, I've watched plenty of guys who, you know, the art just, the drawing just flowed out of them. I mean, it's like they're, it was like, they're just, they just breathe it and it just yeah. happens. And, and that, you know, I always have had to work at it. 
so, you know, I, I've watched other people where it's just like, I have no idea how that's happening, you know, <laughs> but I've been doing it for so long that sometimes people will be like, well, how, you know, it looks like you're just doing this. And it's, <laughs> it's funny because it's like, well, it's just because it's through repetition, you know, of doing it for so long that you pick up these things, you know, but, but, you know, I'm always been amazed that there have been some, you know, I remember uh, when I was a kid, you know, when Bernie Wrightson was starting out, I mean, the guy just, just breathed art, you know, it was just an amazing, uh, amazing gift. I mean, people would tell, I would hear the story about how he would start with a thumb, you know, in the corner of a page and then just draw out an entire awesome Bernie Wrightson, <laughs> you know, so, but, you know, all, those kind of guys are just, you know, amazing, you know, and, um, but, uh, you know, in my case, it's just a matter of, you know, you just keep, just keep plugging away and you figure out a few things, you know, and, uh, and then, and then it goes from there and it's, you know, it's kind of neat when you, you get to that point. Um, but even if you get to that point, you still want to keep learning, uh, new things, you know, but, uh, but I'm really excited about working on fashion and action again, like I said earlier, um, would love to do more with the Lawrence Block character. Um, always having fun with the commissions, you know? So like I said, if people are interested, um, I'm totally up for um, doing more epi or whomever. Have you ever uh, been do... uh, like stumped by a commission or is there a commission, you know, like maybe with epi, you have kind of like this muscle memory where you're able to, Im you know, like say you're a jazz musician, you can easily improvise in a song, you know, but then all of a sudden the band leader calls a new song and you've never played it before. It's a little harder to improvise in that uh, line. So has there, a, I don't know why I, I am like talking in jazz. I feel like. Oh I'm, no, I, I, I love, I love but, the idea. I, you know, it's funny. I love the idea of combining the thoughts <laughs> of, uh, of music and, and, and art. I've always yeah, been. We do that a lot. Yeah. No, I think it's, I think it's a real thing, you know, I mean, you know, people love to talk about the combination, the kind of uh, uh, symmetry or, or, or fusion of uh, comics and movies. And, and I think they're the same for comics and, and uh, music. You know, I think it's very, it's very much connected. I think the key thing to remember in this, though, is that um, the difference, there is a huge difference between comics and movies and comics and music in that, you know, movies are flowing images and, and music is, is flowing musical notes and comics are a static, you know, medium. It's, it's, it's not moving. <laughs> yeah, and so, so, you know, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of like, it's, it definitely plays into it, but it's not the same, you know, because it's not, um, it's not actually moving, but there are some, there are some similarities, I think, in, uh, the process perhaps maybe yeah we talk um, a lot about um like uh, arrangement of layouts and musical arrangement and uh, oh that's interesting non-visual composition and stuff like that that's cool but i i'm trying to think well you know like covers for example um you know cover assignments um mm -hmm. uh I, i'm trying to think um uh well, I know somebody just recently uh, has requested a uh, an Alice in Wonderland um, commission for me, mm -hmm. and it's the uh, it's uh, the Mad Hatter and the Tea Party sequence. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I gotta say, you know, I was like, hmm, let me think about that. But I really enjoyed the challenge of it, you know. And I finally figured out the uh, uh, the layout I wanted to do for it, and the approach I was going to take on it, but. Uh, but it, it was one of those things where it's like, well, that's that's different. But, you know, I was thinking more of like uh, maybe something in, in uh, kind of an Arthur Rackham, uh, again, in my own style. But, you know, I was thinking more like Arthur Rackham, maybe a little a little darker, but at the same time, uh, you know, using brighter colors, hmm. uh, having kind of a storybook look to it. But, you know, something a little more, uh, you know, making the Mad Hatter look a little, uh, I don't know, uh, really mad as in crazy you know <laughs> and uh and so that's kind of cool um i did i had a guy uh that recently requested uh in the style of the classic illustrated stuff that i've done in the past 
he wanted me to do uh, a Cerno de Bergenac. And uh, that was co- totally out of left field for me. And I loved doing that. I had a great, uh, great time working on that. And he also asked for a Jekyll and Hyde piece, uh, but he also asked me to include another Stevenson character, uh, the Bottle Imp, which is kind of this evil genie character in this bottle based on a Stevenson short story. And that was kind of similar to how I work, but it was still something new, you know, and I thought that was really cool, too. I'm really open to any kind of uh, uh, subjects. Um, you know, over at Z2 Comics, I did a, uh, a Blondie piece for the Blondie graphic novel. And that was something different. You know, speaking of music, mm-hmm. uh, man, I loved working on that. I, I would love doing more uh music related things when i was younger i really loved the idea of being a um, album cover artist i always thought that would be a really cool thing to do because that was really a thing at the time yeah you know because you know the the size of the albums and uh i was really a huge fan of roger dean the guy that did the yes cover album so good oh yeah man that kind of stuff i would love to get into uh, uh when i was younger i really loved the whole fantasy uh psychedelia you know uh what was the I, other guy storm thurgison storm okay thurgison? i'm not sure who that is but I, I, if i saw his work i would definitely I think he did like dark side of the moon and some of that oh other. okay oh that kind of that yeah. kind of stuff is really cool too you know so right now yeah. i think this is at a good stopping point so yeah. like i said what i'm gonna do is is let this sit overnight and then put some more focus on the highlights in this area and see this area here, since I'm still going to be going over it with the white, I'm kind of leaving uh, this as is for now, but I will delineate uh, his cloak here and the red lines around him. So that's really going to come out in the final, but it's, but it's good to just leave it as is now until I get this gradation that I've got going here. Uh, uh, figured out in here and then the last stage of this will probably be you know when i'm done with something like this there'll come a point where i go you know highlight you know like like i'll put a maybe a highlight here you know like to to emphasize the light uh of the uh the light hitting his shoulder here with the blade right um maybe a little bit over here a little bit over here the top of here and then this area in here, I'll delineate last, maybe take a little bit of red paint and brighten up the red around here a little bit more, uh, and then take that same red and put it into the blood here to make it really stand out. So, man, John, thank you so much. This has been amazing. It's been so cool watching you do this. It's, you know, even... guys, we've been talking about doing this for a while. And I'm yeah. really, uh, uh, thank you so much for, again, having me here. Um, Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's really a pleasure, as always, to talk with you guys. I mean, it's always, uh, uh, I learn things talking with you guys, and I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate your questions. And I hope that this has helped to, you know, explain a little bit of my process. And, and uh, I hope everybody uh, enjoys looking at the work. And again, if yeah. they're interested in the commission, uh, feel free to contact me uh, through Steve or contact me directly. And, and and we can post that information, I guess, at the end as well. We will. Yeah. And if anyone has been working on something in this style while they're watching us and, and listening, post it and tag us three and tag Grendel cast. We'd love to see what you were working on. While oh yeah watching. i would love to see that that would be yeah. great I, yeah. and i hope this can be of some inspiration to everybody uh, and i hope you get some i hope you get some ideas from this and and you know as i always say to everybody you know uh, uh you know always pursue your own characters you know always absolutely. go for create your own stuff absolutely come up with your own characters your own grendels or fashion and action or batmans or supermans or whatever because you know there's absolutely. plenty of room for new characters out there absolutely and, uh, you know i'm I, you know it's always great to see uh people coming up with new ideas and and i hope that uh seeing how i work here can be of some some help in in learning how to tell their stories and, you know, absolutely so. great thank you so much john thank you to everyone for being here ben thank you so much for being a great person i love you man yeah, i love and uh so everyone until next time vivat grendel 
Keep on grinning. Keep on grinning. Thank you, Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Read more comics. Read more grinning. <laughs>